Hello, happy July. It is time for another What I Read This Month, aka What I Read in the Month of June, which was miserably hot by the way. Somehow the first day of July is like a beautiful 75 degrees, but then multiple weeks in June were just in the 90s and so humid and it was horrible and I'm really excited for the summer humidity to be over. So actually I've read a lot. Well, I didn't read a lot in terms of number of books, but each of the books was pretty long. Like I read three fantasy books this month instead of like two fantasy and two romance. So I'm pretty happy with that. The first book I read in June was Five Broken Blades by Mae Cortland. I'll save my discussion of Red Tower books for my second of their reads this month, but suffice to say this read like a first draft, not even a second draft, like a first draft. The kind of pitch on the back is let the best liar win and basically it's about five mercenaries slash assassins of various flavors who are given this order to execute this god king and the reason why he's the god king is because he has this crown that basically makes him immortal and so they need to come up with a way to remove the crown to then kill the king and I think there are six POVs in this book and it is only 463 pages and all of the chapters are only like four to five pages long so it feels like a much shorter book than 462 pages and the font's pretty big so I'm guessing it's probably only only about a 100,000 word book, if that. And that was just simply not long enough for all of the things that the author tried to do. It was entertaining and there were a few perspectives that I really liked. Sora, in particular, who is kind of a poison seductress assassin, I thought her point of view was the most interesting. I think this book would have been way stronger if they had just focused on one or two POVs, but the author tried to do too much with too little and it ended up just not being successful and like I said, read like a first draft. <laughs> There's also insta-love in multiple relationships, so if you don't like that you will definitely not like this. I'm not normally a big fan of insta-love and that kind of carried over here. When you already have struggles with character development because there's too many perspectives and then you add in romance on top of the character development, you just run out of room to do anything successfully and that's just what continued to happen with every single part of this book. It takes about halfway through the book for all of the characters to even meet up with each other and not that the first half was uninteresting, like I didn't find any part of this book necessarily boring. Every time I went to pick it up I was like, okay cool I'm reading this book again and it's mildly entertaining, but I think I ended up reading it two and a half stars just because like I said it didn't do anything for me. It was entertaining enough, but it was kind of like what's the point of reading this? It just needed some more editing for sure, like maybe another two draft and cut out some POVs and it would have actually been okay. I mean it's not like a unique concept in any Anyway, but would have been enjoyable anyway. Next, I read The Tainted Cup by Robert Jackson Bennett. I've read the entire Foundry Side series also by Robert Jackson Bennett and I didn't love the first book in that series but I really liked this next two. This is basically a fantasy murder mystery which I was very excited for because I love murder mysteries and I love fantasy so I was like cool let's combine them together. Unfortunately <laughs> I did not love it. In this world there are these big giant ocean creatures called leviathans who occasionally start descending onto the mainland and they have these like breach walls to stop them and they shoot them with these big cannons. Basically when the leviathans decay they release these different sort of like natural plague spores slash poisons into the world so nature is a very big enemy in this world. The main character is a man named Din who is the assistant to this kind of famous old woman detective named Anna and she's very snarky and ornery and they're investigating the murder of this high-powered military guy and then they end up traveling from where the original murder is to a town along the coast where the leviathans might invade and there's a bunch of engineers who were working on the wall who die or were killed and so then they're investigating how all of this links together with the original murder that they investigated and why someone would want all these engineers dead and how that might even eventually connect with the leviathans and the structure of the world building itself. The reason why this did not work for me is is because of Din, the main character. When I tell you that Din had the personality of a piece of cardboard, I am 
Seriously not exaggerating. It's told in first person and yet we don't actually get his reactions to anything. This man has like 0.5 thoughts every chapter. He doesn't think about anything. He has no personality. Even when he speaks, you know, it's because he's not like, he doesn't have much agency because Anna, his lead detective, is the one who's doing all of the work. She just sends Din out on these random like side quests so that she can get more information for whatever she's doing. And so then Din doesn't actually end up making any decisions on his own. And so it's just very reactionary. And even in the thing that he should be reacting to, he just doesn't. <laughs> Basically the only internal monologue is just him catching us up on things that we might have missed in between scene breaks and him explaining parts of the world to us. The world is interesting, the mystery was interesting enough, but I just did not care about Din and he didn't even feel like a real character to me. Anna, the lead investigator, at least has a personality. It might be annoying like 20% of the time, but at least it's there. And then they're also working with these other detectives, this group that's already at like the breach wall and I could not tell you a single one of their names and while I was reading this I could not tell you a single one of their names or how they differed from each other they were all introduced at exactly the same time in a big room and there were like five of them and I just didn't could not keep track of who was who and they didn't have like enough defining personality traits so I just think the character work in this book was not very good and kind of ruined my enjoyment of the mystery it just ended up being not a slog but I was not really excited to read it and I ended up just not really caring about what was happening because when you're in a character whose head you just feel like you're in you know a piece of cardboard box like I said it just becomes wholly unenjoyable so that's unfortunate I don't think I'll continue with this series I don't care enough about what happens with the larger scope of the world to continue so sad now it's time for my Red Tower books rant and that will be about Heaven Breaker by Sarah Wolf I read one of Sarah Wolf's old series and I loved it so when I saw that she was getting a, an adult sci-fi I was like cool then I saw it was published by Red Tower books and a part of me died a little bit inside if you don't know Red Tower books is the publisher of Fourth Wing, and I have read pretty much every one of their major releases, which would be Fourth Wing, Iron Flame, This Five Broken Blades, Heaven Breaker. There might have been another one in there, but I might be forgetting. And all of them just feel like they need more editing. They just, all their books feel like they don't get any developmental editing. And I'm gonna say a really hot take right now. This book would have been five stars and maybe even one of the best sci-fi books in the last few years if it had been edited by Tor or like literally any other publishing house with a brain because apparently that is not Red Tower books recently. The concept of this was so good. Characters were unique and interesting and did not feel like cardboard boxes like the last book and the first half of this book was so good and then everything just kind of started to slowly peter off like I just slowly started to lose interest and it was just so sad and heart-wrenching because I wanted it to be so good and it was so close to being so good it was so close to being one of my favorite sci-fi books and things just started to fall apart and I really don't feel like that was the author's fault I feel like a really good editor could have made this book amazing this follows a young woman named Sonali Von Hot Claire who begins the book by murdering her father because her father was responsible for killing her mother and she's her, her father's bastard her father is a nobleman in this like space station type world so it basically follows the monarchy only in space and all of the noble pass their time by riding these things called steeds against each other in a jousting tournament which is basically like a giant mech suit and you kind of use like grav boosters to charge at the other person and hit them with your lance and in the steed you are like merging your brain fluid with whatever being is in in the steed that's kind of like the mystery of the book and Sonali is super angry super messed up and while I don't love like characters that are one-dimensional in that way it worked in this book because she had a very clear goal and her personality aligned with that very clear goal and that was to get revenge on everyone who was involved in her mother's murder and so she makes a deal with another nobleman that she will ride the steed for that noble's house if he agrees to kill anyone who who's involved in her mother's murder after each of the jousts that she wins in this like big tournament. One of the biggest problems with this book is that the jousting was just simply boring. Like you come up with this concept 
to have people ride these giant mech suits and charge at each other and somehow it just ends up being jousting. Like I want full mech suit combat or even within the jousting, just something more interesting. I had found it very hard to picture what was going on with these like grav caps and they would return back to this like platform every time that they were going to joust and the scoring system was kind of confusing and all of the jousting scenes there's just so much dialogue it's just her and whoever her opponent is just bantering with each other and so I just felt like I never actually had any idea what was going on in any of the jousting scenes which was unfortunate because that was the only action in the entire book. There's a light romance in this book but it's nothing crazy honestly. Sonali's relationship with her cousin Mira was more interesting than her romantic relationship with Miro's friend. And I will definitely be continuing this series. I'm curious to see what the second book is like. Overall, I was, I would say it about met my expectations because I went into it with lower expectations than I normally would have because Red Tower books, but it was good and enjoyable. And even though the second half kind of started to trail off a little bit, I hope that a lot of those things are corrected in the second book. I don't hold out much hope for that either, but we shall see. The final book that I read in June was Not In Love by Allie Hazelwood. I've read all of Allie Hazelwood's books and it's kind of like watching The Bachelor. Like, is it quality entertainment? No, but is it entertainment? Yes. And no Allie Hazelwood book will ever compare to the wondrous beauty that is Czech and Mate, her YA romance, and I don't even really like YA romance, but it's chess, so how in the world could you compete with that? And the answer is you can't. This book is more uh, like an erotic romance than Allie Hazelwood's typical romance, and if you know anything about Miss Hazelwood, um, smut scenes are not necessarily <laughs> her forte when it comes to writing, so having an entire book filled with them. I would say she made some improvements, definitely, but there were still a lot of cringe moments. I think I enjoyed this more than other people that I've seen on the internet sphere. This follows a woman named Rue Siebert, who is a researcher at a, like, biotech company, and that biotech company is going to be acquired by a larger company, and one of the people leading that acquisition is someone that she kind of almost had a one night stand with because she doesn't date, she only does one night stands. She met him at a hotel bar, but then her brother came and like ruined the vibe because they had some sort of property dispute that kind of just didn't really need to exist in the book at all. But I would say this is a lot more serious than her other STEM romances because not only do you have the, oh, you're trying to steal my friend's company plotline, but they also just share a lot of, like, their fucked up trauma with each other, and I don't really feel like that happened in Allie Hazelwood's other books. It's also the least sciency of all of them. Rue developed some sort of biosynthetic thing to preserve fruits and vegetables longer, something along those lines, but it feels like more of a business romance. <laughs> which it feels kind of weird to say, but I feel like the romance is centered around the acquisitions. Like I learned a lot about about firm acquisitions in this book, which I was not expecting, and about loan forgiveness and like contracts. Like the, her best friend's sister is a lawyer. And so we get full page like info dumps about the lawyer telling Rue and her friend what's going on. So not really much science, just a lot of business and a lot of smut. And I enjoyed it. I liked Rue a lot. I liked Eli a lot. I thought they were interesting together. thought the plot with the business <laughs> acquisitions was actually pretty interesting and it was enough to keep me like reading even though even without the romance the romance alone would not have been enough. I need to have some sort of plot in all of my romance book. And this is pretty successful at both. Like I said, spot scenes, not Miss Hazelwood's strong suit, but there were some nice moments. Overall, I have like very few, I'm just like very neutral. I think I rated it three and a half stars, so whatever. And that is it for my June reads. I will see you next month. Let me know if you read any of these and if you have any opinions on Red Tower books. I was thinking about doing an entire video analyzing Red Tower books, but that would require me to do a little bit of research and I'm lazy, so we'll see. Bye.